to talk about this, Talk TV presenter and Reform Party leader Richard Tice. Richard, afternoon to you. A very good afternoon to you, Ian. And I myself have been a victim to this. In fact, I almost started this, uh, this nightmare because it was exactly two years ago, Ian, that I received a letter from Metro Bank saying that we had to shut down the Reform Party account within 60 days. I was grateful they gave me 60 days, of course. But I asked for an explanation uh, and a decision, an understanding, and, and none was forthcoming. Uh, they said it was a commercial decision. They wouldn't be giving any reasoning. But Ian, I've been in business 30 years, director of hundreds of companies, been involved in dozens and dozens and dozens of bank loans and bank accounts. Never once has yeah. anybody said, not only do they want me to shut it down, but they never want to do business with me again, which is what Metro Bank said. So that was that. Luckily, I had a plan B. I was then shut down by another bank, uh, a small digital bank, last year. I didn't make a song and dance about it, but it's called Tide Bank, T-I-D-E. And again, they just shut me down, no notice, no explanation, just 45 days, move your money, tough luck. And I'll tell you why it's important, Ian, and why uh, your, your previous uh, contributor or personal message in saying it's a free market but actually it's not is it because when the banks get in trouble as we saw in 2008 it's us the taxpayer yeah. that bailed them all out so we are intrinsically linked and in you can't exist in the united kingdom today if you haven't got a bank account correct and of course the, when we did bail them out richard as you know the one of the reasons were give, uh, given because many people said well hang on you wouldn't bail out my window cleaning company why are you bailing out the banks and the argument perhaps not unreasonable, was, look, these are banks, they're a bit more, that they're, they're so crucial to the system, to our infrastructure, to our existence, that they are, a, if you like it, for want of a better phrase, a special case. And yet, when it comes to banking, kicking somebody out, and if every bank did it to an individual, they'd have nowhere to go, there is no such um, generosity in understanding the plight of the consumer, none whatsoever. It's, it's utterly extraordinary. So what I did, Ian, I actually, because it was so hard, and, and we, as a political party, we'd asked a, a number of banks to set up an account, and they all said thanks, but no thanks. So I wrote to the, the, the governor of the Bank of England, one Andrew Bailey, in uh, August of last year, and I said, um, if democracy is to function, you need small parties to be able to challenge the main parties. Therefore, actually, what should happen is the Bank of England should offer a almost like a sort of a, a banking service of last resort. For, for, for politically exposed, let's yep. say, parties or whatever, to ensure that we could exist and therefore democracy could genuinely say to function. And he very nicely replied that day by email saying, uh, received your email, let me get back to you later with a substantive reply. Well, 23 months later, Ian, I'm still waiting for that <laughs> substantive reply. Yeah, I think Shady Bailey's been a bit uh, busy of late, perhaps, Richard. <laughs> he might well have been, but look, I mean, it's not that difficult. He could have given it to one of his team, and sure, they might have spent a few weeks looking yeah. at it. And, um, but the point is, this has been rumbling on for some time. And whether it's politically exposed people like Nigel, like myself, like Toby Young, or the good vicar uh, who merely responded to a customer survey in Yorkshire Building Society, two other former Brexit Party MEPs uh, over the weekend confirmed that they too had had their banks. Uh, one was Nationwide and the other was Metro Bank again, making a reappearance, uh, who also closed them down, including family members, just for having the temerity to be of the same bloodline as someone who entered the political scene. We see in the Daily Mail today, <laughs> the daughter of Dominic Lawson, therefore the granddaughter of the late Nigel Lawson, um, she had her account declined because she had the temerity to be Nigel Lawson's granddaughter, for heaven's sake. I mean, how when does, does that end? even work? I mean, an elected, respected, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, a, a, a big beast in the world of politics, not particularly controversial in any sort of extreme manner, and yet even he was deemed uh, too much for one rather um, sensitive banking institution. But, it, but his granddaughter... His granddaughter, yes. I mean, this, sure, this must be illegal. This is discrimination, right? But, but, but here's where it goes. You know, a couple of years ago, everybody said, oh, you're conspiracy theorists worrying about a central bank digital currency. Of course, they wouldn't cross off the box and not let you buy wine or booze or um, delicious steaks from your respective shops each week if you've eaten too much of this or that. But we're already seeing it. This is where this goes. You're being stopped from operating. You get cut off. 
And that's why we have to nip this in the bud now. We have to say this is completely unacceptable. Yeah. And there should be. Look, I hate daft regulations, but I think this is a really important point of principle. We've got to have the right to have a bank account. I'm told in Germany it is a legal right. That, well, there it is, you see, and you would have thought, again, for reasons we don't need to go over again, it is the way that, that Western economies function. You can't function without it, and we're always encouraged to do things online and, you know, not to physical cash yes. is, you know, is, is a hindrance, it's dangerous, it's blah, blah, blah. So do things digitally if you can, and yet... The, 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 the guardians of this, which are the banks, and there's not exactly hundreds of them out there, you know, there might be a, a couple of dozen, but it's quite limited, really, in high street terms. If you were to mooch up and down your high street, you'd probably find maybe six of them or something. So the idea that there's no regulation around this, Richard, to, to, to kind of reflect... The, and they're not even concerns. These are genuine and, and dangerous and problems. Yeah, and my late uncle, he always used to say, Richard, cash is king. And he loved a bit of the folding stuff in the back pocket. But actually, you know, cash is regulated. Um, and you have to be, you know, you have to sort of uh, do certain things when yeah. you've got cash. Well, likewise, if you're going to regulate cash, you've got to regulate the ability that you're allowed to have a bank account. Otherwise, you cease to be a genuine, real person. And I think it's, it's really scary. I did put an invitation out there on social media a couple of days back saying, has anybody on the left had their bank account cancelled? We'd be delighted to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. And, and answer, there came none. No. It, <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know, Ian. It, it's extraordinary. And, and when you look at the regulations around banking, I know some people call it a sort of light touch regulation, but actually it's about 18 feet of, of full scap <laughs> A4 of regulation. Nothing in there says that you can't discriminate. I mean, it's unbelievable. There isn't something within this entire institution crucial to functioning absolutely pivotal to everything from getting paid to paying others just general stuff there's nothing in there that compels the banks not to discriminate it, it's unbelievable i mean in the city of london there's some vast regulation that came surprise surprise out of the european union it's called mifid 2 it's a mere 1.2 million paragraphs nice of i'm sure very good stuff that i haven't read and i know you won't have too frankly um, I'd actually put the whole lot in the bin. But within those 1.2 million paragraphs, there's no mention of the fact that maybe you do actually need, need to have the legal right as an individual, or, or indeed a business, to have a bank account. Otherwise, an economy can't function, we can't trust each other, the whole thing breaks down. And then everybody does resort back to literally uh, cash yeah. and bartering. And I think, we're, I think we're better than that. I think we can move forward from that. If you go to jail for, I don't know, serial killing or something, and you... Are you suggesting something? You, you come out... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see where these things take us. Uh, if somebody goes to jail for a long period of time and they've committed the most horrendous offences, uh, whatever they happen to be, when they come out, one of the things they're helped to do is set up a bank account. They're allowed to have a bank account. So Bob the serial killer or, you know, sexual assault merchant can have a bank account. But somebody who has a view on, I don't know, the European Union can't have a bank account. How, how, what, what sort of upside down, twisted world are we living in? That's exactly the world that we are living in. And look, I think it is right to rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate prisoners when they've Great. done their time, yep. served what should be their whole sentence. Of course, they should be um, essentially uh, able to come back and function in society and hopefully not reoffend. And that's a critical part of it. But goodness me. If you're a naughty, nasty, bigoted Brexiteer, then uh, woe betide you. You Signs will up. you will suffer the full force of the uh, the banking czars, and yeah. life will be very, very difficult. I do, I, the rumours that Anne Whittacombe's going to set up a Just Giving page are yet unfounded, Richard. I should just <laughs> add that, just in case anyone's pre what she, might happen. she'd be swamped with all sorts of generous offers. She I'm would, actually. Anne, Anne absolutely would. Listen, uh, always uh, great to chat, Richard. Um, I'll see you, I, doubtless, this week um, on the talk and other places.